What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be checking out the brand new SVS Prime Wireless Pro powered speakers. Shout out to the guys over at SVS for sending this over for review. If you guys wanna pick up anything in this video, I will leave some links down below in the video description. Inside, we are greeted with some SVS paperwork. We've got the link cable, the remote control, batteries, and the power cable. And we also get an HDMI cable. All right, so this is the brand new design for this year. So a couple of things that have changed is that the cabinets are a little bit larger. These measure approximately eight inches in depth without the grill and about eight and three quarters with the grill on. Width wise, they're about seven inches wide. Height wise, about 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter inches tall. I'll put the exact measurements up on the screen. Let's pop these grills off now. Let's check out what we're working with. Here we've got a one inch aluminum dome tweeter. And then for the woofer, we've got a five and a quarter inch woofer. Here we've got a three inch wide display. This is your source control. And then on the opposite side, we've got your play pause slash volume knob. Let's spin this around back. Here we've got all your connections. Now these are ported speakers. As you can see that these have ports, but this is powered by a 200 watt class D amplifier. Each speaker gets 100 watts each. We've got your network connection in out, got your service port. There is a dedicated subwoofer out. We got your line level ins, also a 3.5 mil line level in. This is your Wi-Fi setup, Bluetooth setup button, link cable connection, optical in, and new for this year is an HDMI in port, which also supports EARC. And then last, you got your power cable inlet. Okay, so these will support up to 24-bit 192K using the DTS PlayFi app. Also, this has support for Bluetooth 5.0, high resolution wireless streaming through Bluetooth and through Wi-Fi. This will play down to 42 Hertz. So it's got some pretty ample bass. It's said to be a bit more deeper than last year's version. And the big thing this year is that you can hook this up to your TV so you can forego the sound bar, make this a little mini home theater setup in your small bedroom, or if you don't wanna have a room full of speakers, use the HDMI EARC input on this and you can run your TV straight to these speakers. So the SVS Prime Wireless Pro is pretty easy to set up. All you've gotta do is take the link cable, link it up to the right channel, take the other end, link it up to the left channel. That's all you gotta do, and of course, you gotta plug in the power cable. That's all the cable connections or physical connections that you gotta do. If you are gonna hook this up to your television set, there is an HDMI uh, input as well this year. I think last year's model did not have that, so it's pretty nice that you can hook up your television to this year's model. Now, the first thing that you're probably gonna wanna do is download the app, which you can get on iOS or the Android Play Store. Well, for my case, I hooked it up using the iPad. So when you do that, you're gonna have to go into your settings, scroll down until you see um, add AirPlay speaker, which is gonna be the SVS model. Once you add that, you're gonna jump back into the DTS PlayFi app, and then this is where you're gonna see your entire collection of streaming apps, such as Tidal, Cobuzz, Spotify, etc. Now, once you're in the app, and if you wanna enable the highest quality streaming, you're gonna to have to go into the little lower right-hand corner here, tap on the plus button, and you're gonna to have to enable critical listening. This will give support for 24-bit 192K. Now, high-res is only gonna work through Chromecast. If you're gonna use AirPlay 2, that only supports 24-bit 48K. So the only negative thing I have about streaming using the DTS PlayFi app is that it doesn't tell you exactly what bit rate or what resolution you're streaming at. Now, because of that, I did end up using Rune because within Rune, it will tell you the bit rate and resolution that you're streaming at. So maybe in a future iteration, the DTS app will get updated to tell you the incoming signal. Now, this isn't an SVS thing, it is a DTS thing. Now, as far as sound quality, I use this in a two channel setup and I'll also use this hooked up to my television set. Now, once, every, once you get everything set up, I think this is a perfect solution if you wanna get rid of your sound bar, because let's face it, for a sound bar, it's basically hooked up into, well, sound bars are just one long box. And what they try to do is hook up maybe 11 speakers, maybe 14 speakers into this one long centralized sound bar. And 
And yes, some soundbars do sound pretty convincing as far as getting Atmos effects and side channel effects, overhead effects, left, center, and right. I mean, that just sounds confusing in itself, but sometimes it can sound pretty decent. Whereas if you're just taking just left and right, you're gonna get a very solid center channel image with the SPSs because it images amazingly well. Whereas on a soundbar, if you really think about it, if you're, you're putting like 11 channels in one box, trying to get really clean separation left and right from that, sometimes it does, just doesn't work because you can, you can automatically tell that the left and right channel is just coming directly in front of you. So sometimes the left and right channels, the imaging fails because they're in one box. Everything can kind of get a little bit smeary. Now, if you are hooking it up to your television set and you do want to get that extra bass, once you hook up a subwoofer to it, it automatically kicks the speakers into an 80 hertz low pass filter. So you don't have to do anything on your subwoofer. Actually, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to dial in the subwoofer's own crossover to blend it in with the SPSs because it doesn't activate anything on the subwoofer itself. All it does is set the crossover on the main speaker. So keep that in mind. So once you get everything dialed in, then it's like you could play these things extremely loud. I mean, just from the looks of the speakers themselves, they don't look terribly big, but once you take the the low end frequencies out of the equation, you can really jack these things up once you hook them up with a subwoofer. So for my testing, I did hook them up using a Golden Ear Force Field 40 subwoofer. Fortunately, I didn't have a, an SVS subwoofer, sorry guys. And it sounded spectacular with that. I mean, just the imaging alone, like I said, excellent rock solid center channel image. It works extremely well hooked up to your television set. But how does this sound for two channel music? Well, as comparison, uh, my normal speakers have been the Q Acoustics Concept 300s, which I think they, what do they cost? I think they cost about $4,000. So it's about four times the price of these SPSs. Plus I've got, I've got them hooked up to some Cambridge Audio mono blocks. So automatically right off the bat, you know, not really a fair comparison, but the image extremely well. If we're talking about the high-end detail, air, actually, no, I think these have a little bit more air than the Q Acoustics did. Q Acoustics sound really flat. Whereas the, I feel like the treble response on the SPSs have maybe just a, a slightly more airier feel to it. If I'm really comparing the two, being really nitpicky, I don't find either one of the speakers to have a really a bright top end. I think they're both kind of rolled off, but I, I think the SPSs have just a little bit more detail. So a little bit more air and clarity around the speaker, a little bit more space around the speaker when comparing it to the Q Acoustic Concept 300s. That being said, I do wish there was an EQ inside the app or like a, a dedicated SBS app that was made for these speakers. So you could bump up the treble a little bit because I personally do like a little bit more, a little bit more of a brighter response. And I'd feel like these ones are just a little bit softer than what I personally like myself. So if you wanna get the really crispy high end, like on cymbals and hi-hats, I think you're gonna feel like the SVSs are a little bit short. So I do wish there was maybe like an EQ, like an SVS EQ app. As far as the mid-range, mid-range was great. I mean, vocals had some real good gravitas and good uh, projection to them, especially with some male vocals. I did my medley of testing with like Lenny Kravitz, some of the Cowboy Junkies, uh, Post Malone, even Taylor Swift's new album, which I've listened to a dozen times already. Um, <laughs> that sounds really good on these SVS speakers. So I really did enjoy the very smooth response from the speakers. Now, as far as bass response, everybody knows SVS for their subwoofers and whatever they took from their subwoofers, I feel, I feel like they brought it over to these speakers because I feel like if we're looking at a flat line, I think there's gonna be like a bump, maybe like a hump for the lower end region, maybe from like 50 Hertz on down, and then maybe a slight slope going downwards. For the, uh, for the top end. So I feel like there's a, a, a very good, prominent, hefty low end response for bass. Like I'm gonna say maybe about 50 Hertz. From 50 Hertz on down, I feel like the bass, just there's a big hump there. And man, just a lot of music. Like I said, I like a lot of rap music, pop music. And even without a subwoofer, there's just a tremendous amount of bass. I feel like maybe the bass response is hitting maybe around 30 Hertz in my room. So I think in a larger room, you're probably not gonna get that much bass response, but in like a mid-sized room, 13 by 13, maybe a little bit smaller, I think these uh, I think these speakers are gonna do wonderful as far as like bass response. So it almost sounds like you got an SB3000 hooked up to them. 
Of course, you know, if you do hook up a subwoofer to them, it's gonna really elevate it, just like I said, for television watching. But just know, low in response, spectacular. Mid-range is excellent. Uh, the top end, I do feel it is a little bit soft. I think these are some great speakers. If you're gonna listen to them for longer periods of time, you're definitely not gonna get any fatigue or anything like that. Your ears aren't gonna be bleeding from pain because they're so bright. And especially for movie watching, if you're gonna be watching for, if you're gonna be binging TV shows hours on end, you're gonna be able to crank these things all day. Eight hours, no issues, great stereo imaging, very wide sound stage, very detailed. I feel like the, like I said, the top end, maybe a little bit softer than what I would like, but still that translates to really long listening sessions. So at the time of this video, a pair of these SVS Prime Wireless Pros are selling for $900 a pair. These things are extremely versatile. So if you wanna hook them up to your television set, to be it at soundbar replacement, they're gonna do wonderful for that. If you wanna use them for some critical listening in your hi-fi setup, they work excellent for that as well. If I had one caveat that I would probably change, maybe take the display from the front and maybe move it up top because I did choose the white ones and when you're looking at them side by side, the left speaker is very clean. All you're gonna see is either the drivers or if the grills are on it, it looks super clean. But then you look over at the right speaker, which is the powered speaker, everything is very clean, it's white, but then you just see this little black little strip with the two little knobs. So that kind of breaks up the aesthetic between the two speakers. So it kind of feels like you've got a pair of desktop speakers hooked up in your hi-fi setup or in your television setup. I think maybe in the third generation, maybe move the display up top, maybe get rid of the dials, or maybe if you can recess them, do that as well, or just go with like some touch controls for the source selection and the volume control. So I think that'd make it more aesthetically pleasing if you're gonna keep these guys out, out in the open, hooked up to your television set or your hi-fi. So it'll look a little bit more premium, I feel. So, you know, that's a little nitpick, but as far as just performance is concerned, I think they're extremely, extremely versatile speakers, extremely great sounding speakers. And if you do wanna pick these up, I will leave some links for these speakers down below in the video's description. Anyways guys, that's all I've got. Have you guys heard the SVS Prime Wireless Pros? And if you have, leave your comments down below and let me know how you feel about the performance. As always guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you again in the next video.